visit Athena Hatcher's page on Facebook and anywhere else you can find her Instagram. Kill Athena. She's hot and she's a goddess and she knows what she's doing with uh, coming up hard and taking over the world. And I do respect and appreciate her and I hope she joins in commenting on uh, this uh, experimental theater shit I'm doing. Obviously it's two phone camera and uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. I'm just going to talk on here and instead of someone being aggravated by their DMs being filled up with my precious fucking years of, years of, uh, you know, information and then education. High school was information and getting pussy. Actually, you know, high school was the best time I've ever had in my life. I peaked, not in high school, I peaked looking down at my wife and one of her girlfriends, um, taking turns, you know, filleting me, I guess, and keep this, I get self-conscious, but, uh, um, that's when I'm a bad actor, fuck being polite, number one rule of Sanford Miser, I'll teach you how to do Sanford Miser technique on here if you want to, if you're in the land area, I'll teach you in person, um, give you acting lessons, I'll take you to the acting studio in Orlando if you want to learn proper, but I'm a beast at it, I can teach you, but, uh, yeah, fuck being polite. Truth in the moment. That's Meisner. Truth in the moment is what always got me in trouble. What would you want to do in the truth if, if you've told the truth in the moment? Which ends up with a lot of guys picking people to work with if they're attractive and they want to kiss them. You know, they wanted to kiss them since they see them come in the door. Well, the most impressive Meisner I've seen acting exercise is essentially... And I guess we're doing the acting exercise, but this will warm me up into being in my truth. It will. Trust me. Cracker Jack. Crack, cracker Black. In fact, I'm going to show you a little bit of a... Uh, I don't give a fuck. Meisner Heath Ledger technique on method acting. Alright? Like, um... Alright. This might be the last time you see me, boys. I'm about to not eat again for another day and, and be tripping balls. So, that's just a fact of who um, the method actor is. Here is a question I have for Sandy Meisner. Fuck being polite. Don't end the scene then, bitches. Don't, don't let it draw back, but it's got to. Otherwise it turns into violence and sex. But, my ex-wife, my favorite one, she would be in the truth of the moment, act on that truth every time, couldn't stop, couldn't do anything other than, so, if she really wanted to kiss a guy at work, if she really wanted, that was the truth, that's what she did, I mean, she would listen to what she wanted to do, like it was the end of the world, like there was no consequence, one buddy said, I kiss your old lady at work, and she says, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I didn't really want to, but I just did, well, she did really want to, she just coming to terms with that, acting out, and we learned to understand each other. We had this thing also. I learned this in acting. If you learn the if you learn the the lines down pat, learn the lines down pat, then you can do whatever you want with your emotions. The lines are the raft, and your emotions are the river. All right. Doesn't matter what the river is uh, going through, and, 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 and then you can. You can play with the lines. So I can say, Fuck you, motherfucker. You're gonna have to leave this diner. Or you're gonna get shot. Or, If you hear any of you motherfucking pricks move, I'm gonna execute every one of you. Then you can do that line. I mean, just like, I didn't do the same line twice, but the emotion was different. The same line could be said a million ways. At, at first, I thought John Travolta was gonna ruin Pulp Fiction. But, he played a really good heroin addict. And I... I applaud him, and I think I think he might have uh, um, done a little character uh, acting on that. He he struggled with the morality of uh, of it all, man. Really, the uh, what's the what's the fucking real catch for the rich guys in Scientology? You know, hide their money there. That's probably it. They get tax sheltered for a big time, huh? Well, yeah, I'm very interested in making this particular style of acting into a way to see one's own mind as it is in the moment and transfer that into um, 
another another skill that I have, just big mind. And Genpo Roshi developed it, or put it together for our use, which shows you who you are and how many of you there are to uh, in there going crazy. And uh, he helped my wife. He helped my wife learn that uh, she wasn't the only one that had voices or issues with who's ru- who was running who. Um, all the bad voices she'd hear, those are people who were trying to protect her and uh, were on her ass. And she felt overwhelmed. They were out of, out of, can- out of kilter. And so what Rinpo, Rinpo Roshi did was bring in some other voices to mediate. And it fucking worked. It worked. But she was so terrified of Genpo Roshi's Skype. I don't know why, but she was terrified of it. I don't think she wanted the voices to go away. I think she wanted to... Um, I think she wanted to keep them because she was comfortable with them. They protected her from the shit. You know, she'd go all half-baked. Psychotic, psychotic episodes brought in by her own psychosis and pressure and my love of high-speed chin feed and experimenting drove us tore us apart. We were too crazy. We understood each other and still do and it's nonsense we're not together. But she left under a fucking psychotic break and in a bad state and this douchebag kept her. You know, Caleb wouldn't let me talk to her. Uh, said they would call the police if I drove over there. That was her, her family. Please don't come here. We'll call the police. She does not want to see you. She does not want to talk to you. Well, they were holding her captive, and she didn't have any way of making that decision for herself. They were looking at her breaking down and just not knowing how to treat it other than it's my fault somehow. I did that to her. Well, no, I'm the only one that can help that sometimes. Man. Okay. Okay. Here's what's up. Here's what's up. For real. You guys can help me. First question. For the sake of anything I'm writing, or anything we're developing as a, uh, as a team, or as a collaborative effort, I want to know, more than anything, what's the difference between an outlaw and a law-abiding citizen. <laughs> to me, an outlaw is not a fucking brand. And they've turned it into a brand. We know that. I'm bringing, I mean, Gigi Allen has something to say about that branding shit. They can do it to Hank Williams. They can steal Hank's legacy and uh, start, start saying he's the first outlaw. But <clears throat> he was an outlaw. Because he turned the whole world once up on its ear. And the Opry got rid of him when he was embarrassing to the Opry. And no longer making him money. Well, I got news for you, buddy. Um, Hank Williams died of opiate overdose. He stopped at two different doctors within an hour or two from each other drinking. Got into a room. Passed out. Hit his head. A hooker helped him up. or you know, he, And he said, all you angels are going to be the devil of me, or taking me to hell, something like that. So, he, I guess, uh, I guess, I guess he, uh, he knew what he liked. I don't think he was getting him for his back. The booty would have done that enough. And some old home remedies I'm sure they had for backs. Drive, touring around the country in a Cadillac doesn't really fuck up your back. Now, if he was on the black flag getting a van shit and getting spat on by fucking crazy punk rock kids I think you'd be kicking their ass and fucking driving that van over their fa- fucking f- girlfriends but you know that's what an outlaw would do correct the situation that's what that's what Gigi was trying to do was eliminate burn it down start from the ground up because institutions and buying in to an institution you're really just buying into a so-called institution, a money conglomerate. The Opry just investors. He owned Hank until he was not, owned the, an image and song of Hank Williams and promoted him until his, 
embarrassing to do so for the fucking howdy touties. But they killed him. The doctors that gave him the shots were recommended by the Opry. And he had been giving them while he's performing on the Opry. And he had been having trouble controlling his need for the shots. But uh, he's Hank Williams, so he gets what he wants, right? That's what the doctors thought. And when they found him dead, oh, he was drinking and hit his head, whatever. No. The autopsies do not, did not do toxicology reports because their doctors reported what they did. So there was no need to find opioids in his blood because they, or body because they already knew that they were there because the doctor's report doesn't tell you that they got him, you know, gave him enough to knock his ass down, you know, in two different states. God damn it, man. I just set down a bunch of fucking, um, Prop speed. I can't lose that. Mm. Right. So you can skip through some of these. I, I'll kill it. I mean, these are just ideas, and you can look at either, any of them. But uh, this one, shout out to Athena Hatcher. I'd really like to talk to you on the phone about how you would like to be involved in this Fringe Festival adventure. Um, it's going to get wild, I have a feeling. I'm going to start losing friends. You know what the catch and kill is, huh? Do you, nigga? Do you know what catch and kill is? This fucking doctor. I'm gonna give you the fucking thing about doctors. They're fucking ridiculous. They're ridiculous. They won't give you what you need. And God forbid you already know what you need because you've had the shit on your pharmacy list for ages and decades. But. If you're broke, you can't get what you need. That's what's up. You get a fucking, um, you know, uh, well, it's emergency care. It's care to get you by until, et cetera. Some of, some of it's really good. Mental health's really good because I'm manic. 